In this HSM tutorial, we're actually going to do two things at one time. Number one, I'm going to show you how to reset the origin and show you how easy it is. And one thing that I love about this software is how easy it is. The second, second thing is to show you how I can do multiple roughing operations in the same process. So, here we go. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and lay the part more like I would like it to look. So it's going to look something a little bit like that. I'm not going to worry about getting it perfect. I'm just going to set it like that. We'll come into cam. We'll go to setup. And this time we're actually going to go through some of these to try to reset it. And really what I want to do is the very first thing is to choose my stock point before I choose my model orientation. So I'm going to move it to that corner. I'm going to select the Z and X axis. Those are the ones that I just used because they're there first. And I get to choose them. So Z axis is going to be this one. Now be careful because if you just keep going around, all it's, it hasn't really changed, it's still stuck on the Z. You actually have to come over here and select X and then select the X, which it's already on. Now you get the opportunity to flip those two or leave them alone. So if I flip the Z, that'll make it correct, and now the X is correct. And then stock is as it's been, and I can do fixed size because that's the size I've been making. them. So I'll say OK, and I now have my stock set up. Now the really cool part is no matter how my part is sitting, if I come up here and say tool isometric, it'll now put it in the correct tool isometric rather than the isometric. So I'm not going to use this view cube up here, I'm going to keep using this tool isometric. All right, so now to the fun part is a roughing operation with what we call a rest rough. So I'm going to choose my pockets. I'm going to choose the bottom pocket as we've done before. I'm going to choose a half inch end mill. And you're going to say, well, half inch end mill can't do that entire thing. And you would be correct. So I'm going to come in with that half inch end mill. For right now, we're going to not leave any stock, which I've already really taken care of and we're going to leave this as one single depth. I'm going to say OK. It'll go in there and it's going to hog it out as fast as it can. And I'll say simulate. So in my simulation, it will now just take out what that thinks that tool can actually do. So I'll hit play and I'll fast forward it. And you'll see that it really didn't get that much, but time-wise, it's taken away quite a bit of it all in one shot. With the rest roughing operation, I'll go in and tackle the areas that the last tool didn't get. So I'm going to do 2D pocket. I'm going to select the exact same pocket I did a minute ago, but I have the option for rest machining. As I choose rest machining, right now I have to actually teach it the diameter that I used on my last one. As soon as I do that, it's going to interpret what the last tool should have been able to get and what the next tool is necessary, what's needed for the next tool to grab that. So the tool that I used was a half inch end mill, and my new tool is going to be an eighth inch end mill. And when I say OK, it should then go get whatever the last tool didn't get. So now what we want to see is both of these processes put together. So I'm going to simulate my machine. My half inch tool should get as much of it as it can. And then the eighth inch tool is going to come in and get the rest. When we do our show comparison, we'll see that there's very little left in each one of these corners only a sixteenth of an inch radius.